Good morning. Good morning. I am a minute late, but StreamYard crashed and lost everything I'd put into it and I'd start again in the last minute. So technology again, not me, technology. I work fine. I function fine. It's the tech that lets you down every time, isn't it? Anyhow, how are you this fine Tuesday morning? I hope you are well and I hope you are ready with a notepad and pen today because last week on my live, I dug really deep, um, deeper and deeper into goal setting for 2024, following on from my masterclass that I ran the week before. This week, I wanted to dig quite deep into business strategy and really help you focus in on the things that are going to have the biggest impact on your sales in 2024. Now, you may have heard me talking about one or more of these things in the past. Hey, morning. Um, you may have heard me talk about one or more of these things in the past on a regular basis, and it, it, nothing changes in business. Yes, things change, but the, the actual basis of business strategy, the things we need to do to generate sales, never change. They haven't changed for me in 35 years of being in business, and they will never change. Yes, technology changes. Yes, customer choice and demands change, but the operational strategies in building a business and generating sales never change. So I want to start with that this morning. For those of you that are watching on other platforms and that you've not seen me before, welcome. I am Mandy Nicholson and I am the creative genius consultant. I'm an artist and an author. I am a creative retreat owner in Scotland and I help creative women to launch, grow and scale their businesses and make more money. So first of all, I'm just going to say it's like the 31st of October and I have three amazing ladies graduating from my creative mastermind today. It's been awesome watching their journeys and um, they are, I've challenged them because they're graduating together with doing a testimonial together as three, as the terrible three. So looking forward to that. Um, and it's really important to acknowledge how important your audience is. Your, not only your audience, your clients, they make such a difference to your life as well as you making a difference to theirs. Now, I have got notes on the screen. So if I'm not making eye contact, it's because I'm reading notes here. So first, I want to talk you through the business strategy side of things, the things that you need to think about and the areas you need to focus on for 2024. And then I want to dive a little bit deeper in how to really generate more sales using that strategy. Okay, so bear with me, this might be quite a long live. So if you haven't got time now, do watch it back on replay. Do have a pencil, do have a paper and pen. Um, so it sits in the group and it sits on all of my social media. You can watch it again and again. It's like having the video training all for yourself. So let's start with, you know, whenever you are, whenever we're talking about business, any business, no matter what that business is or what that business does, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's an event planning business, whether it's a shop, it doesn't matter what the business is. Step one in strategy is to do your market research and know your target audience. So that means in-depth market research. So thoroughly looking at emerging trends and looking at customer preferences, what are they wanting at the moment, particularly in the creative industries? What are consumers demanding? Paying attention to, you know, the change in needs, the change in trends that are happening all the time, specifically for your target audience, your ideal customer, your ideal client, call it what you will. Then really define your ideal client, your ideal customer. Create a detailed buyer persona for them. Know exactly what it is that they are likely to want from you from the things that you serve them with in your business. It's the most important thing when you're looking at business strategy is this market research and understanding your customer. You then may need to diversify your products 
in order to meet that customer need and demand. So diversifying your product offerings. So it may be, and I, ha I, I do a lot of one-to-ones that are business strategy focused. It may be that you've got something really great, but it could lead to something else. It could be a lead magnet to a higher ticket offer. So diversify your product offerings is also a key strategy. So it may be that you're expanding. If you're a product-based business, expanding your product range we discuss this all the time in the Creative Mastermind. As you learn things from your current customers, then it gives you the opportunity to look at how you can expand and meet their needs. So new products, new services that cater to the current market and the needs of your customer. So staying updated is really important in terms of diversifying. Looking at things like subscription services, yeah? Um, subscription boxes, craft supplies, kits, instructional content. Subscription models can provide a really steady stream of income and they build customer loyalty, that know, like and trust factor that everybody's talking about these days. Actually, we used to just call it customer loyalty, but everybody's on the bandwagon of know, like and trust. So let's call it that and fit in with everybody else. It doesn't matter what we call it. What you want is to build that brand loyalty. So the next thing that you want to be looking at in terms of strategy is to embrace e-commerce and online presence. Automate, automate, automate. You want the tech doing as much as possible. So you need to optimize your website. To ensure your website's user-friendly, mobile-friendly, and optimized for search engines. Diesel, that's the dog wanting out. I knew it. Both of them wanted to be in the room with me. Yeah, there he is, Diesel. You can see him. And now he wants to go out. So bear with me while I let the dog out. Come on. Honestly, dogs on lives. Are you going out too, Lexi? Come on. Both of you out. People are wonder what's going on, won't they? <laughs> I'm back. The dogs are out. So hopefully we'll have peace for the rest of this live. Um, you couldn't bloody plan it, could you? Um, so, yes, making sure that your, your website is optimized. So search engine optimization is about Google searching and putting you at the, the top. If somebody types in what it is you're selling or offering, you want to be right at the top of the Google search. And implementing things like secure online shopping features to make the checkout process seamless and quick. People don't like to go through clunky steps to get to the end of their purchase journey. They want it to be smooth. So we have to embrace e-commerce and tech to have an online presence and to have a business these days. Obviously, along with that is, you know, leveraging social media. Use various social media, media platforms to showcase what it is you have to offer. Focus on one and really nail it, get good at it and generate, you know, enough income from that and then introduce other platforms. If you can do two at the same time and repurpose content into two or three, then do that. As you do that, you get better at it. Yeah. Um, I mean, things like Instagram and Pinterest are really, really good for creatives and crafters. So don't discount those platforms. They can be great for sales. They can be absolutely brilliant. Um, not able to set up any plans at the moment. I was in a complete rut. I'm just seeing a comment there, but I do admire the hard work you do. Thank you so much. That's so nice when you get nice comments like that. Okay, everybody's favorite thing we're gonna move into yet. Yeah. You might be incredibly talented as a creative. You probably are. You might have all of these amazing things that you offer, but if you don't get good at marketing and branding, then sales are not going to come your way. All right. Marketing and branding are key. Content marketing. So creating valuable content that educates, that inspires, and that entertains your audience. Those are the key pillars inspire, educate, entertain. 
share crafting tutorials, painting tutorials, behind the scenes stories, tips related to what you do in your business. Branding and storytelling are so important. Craft a compelling brand story that connects with your audience, speaks directly to your ideal customer, um, reaches their desires, their pain points. It's so important that your marketing and branding ticks that box at all time. Let them know who you are, what you stand for, and why you are unique and special and that they should buy from you. And with branding and marketing, it's important to think about collaborations and partnerships. So collaborating with other creative businesses um, and influencers to expand your reach across the social media platforms can be really, really good for your business. So don't discount that, but be careful when you step into that and make sure there are boundaries in place um, and contracts if necessary to make sure that in that position of collaborations or partnerships that you do not get used and abused. Um, because I've seen that happen a million times. You've got to protect yourself. So the next thing in terms of strategy is financial management, money mindset, yeah? Budgeting and financial planning is important. And I know that this is something that a lot of creatives don't necessarily like, but developing a clear budget that outlines your um, expenses and revenue goals, your income goals, having that cash flow document, doing the work where you're actually having to sit down and think about all of the costs and all of the potential income streams that you could generate means that you're more likely to do it. And then monitoring your finances regularly and adjusting your strategy as needed. So what if you set a goal of £2,000 a month for the first three months of 2024, and three weeks into January, you are at £1,200 of say, over revenue with £800 to go. Now, you either let that continue at its current rate, which is not, it's £400 a week, yeah, not what you actually planned for, which is £500 a week, yeah, so you can then adjust your strategy, launch something, do an event to bring in that extra. So it keeps you on track. Having a strategy for financial management keeps you on track and forces you to think about what you're doing in your business rather than sitting comfortably at the lower level, giving yourself that kick up the butt in week four to actually do something different to, to generate additional revenue. You must, must, under financial management, have a pricing strategy that reflects the work and the costs that go into your business. Um, so it's important then to look at your pricing. Is it covering costs? Is it allowing for reasonable profit? Is it allowing to pay yourself and never, never undervalue your work? And that's all I'm going to say on financial management. Number six is, if you are a creative, consider craft fairs or local events, not necessarily to generate loads of sales, but to generate loads of contacts, network improvement, um, connecting with your community, getting them talking about you. I see craft fairs um, and gallery exhibitions more as a marketing opportunity than a sales opportunity, but that marketing opportunity leads to sales, if not on the day going forward. So it's really important if you do do these, that you're giving out business cards, that you're taking email addresses, that you're talking to people and engaging with them in real life and having conversations. So I think that's a good part of your strategy for 2024 to get out there, even if it's only two craft fairs over the year or two gallery exhibitions over the year. I think those of you that have done it would agree. It's excellent for your business and it can have a real massive impact. In fact, one of my clients, Kelly, has just done a, a new event over the weekend and it was really good for her business, really powerful and has really helped her. So here's my one of my favorite things. 
at the next point, which is customer service. You know, I go out every day to deliver exceptional customer service. This is free value that I'm sharing with you today. I've just waved goodbye to two um, bed and breakfast guests this morning who've had a wonderful time here. Everything was perfect. I expect a 10 out of 10 review because that's the standard that I've delivered. And how you do anything is how you do everything. So make it your passion to provide excellent customer service. Respond to people quickly. Um, address any issues professionally. Make sure that you put in the customer at the heart of your business. Happy customers often become repeat customers and huge advocates for your brand. They will a, a very happy customer will go and tell 10 other people about you, your products and your brand. Okay, we're getting to the end of the strategy points here. And I did warn you it might be a long one and there are a lot of points here, but these are all the things to consider as a business owner. You are in business. You are a business owner. It's your responsibility to think about these strategies in your business because they will all together generate more sales. So the last three points are sustainability. And I'm reading off my notes here, by the way. Sustainability. What are your eco-friendly practices? Yeah, do them, but don't just do them. Tell people about them. We recycle everything here. I tell the guests about it when they come. We recycle their cans, their bottles, anything that they have or bring in. I tell them to bring it down because we recycle everything. We use recycled, we use handmade soaps in cardboard packaging, just the little details of that so that people can see how you are dealing with environmental issues. I have my um, energy efficiency rating on most of my um, sites that I have the, the art bank on. So think about that because actually there's a huge demand now for eco-conscious mm -hmm products and practices in businesses. So don't let that one slip you by when you are looking at your strategy. Last two points, data, yeah, data. Make data-driven decisions. And I know you hate data and analytics and all of those big words that are left-brained, but you know, simple things like tracking the website um, traffic, yeah? Um, conversion rates, if you do events, that's important. Customer behavior, uh, customer feedback, trust stamps. Um, for me, my score on booking.com doc, booking is really important to me because that's people see really good reviews and they book a room. Use the data that's available to you. Look at where you can find it to make informed decisions and optimize your business strategy and, and redefine it and tweak it. So even data, data is available to you all the time. So how, what's the number of people in your group? What's the number of people on your personal page? What's the number of people on your business page? And how has that grown in the last month? You can keep, you can keep the data analytics really simple to the basic data that is available to you um, automatically through the social media cha channels. So don't overthink that or think it's scary because it's not, all right? It needs to be part of your business strategy. And this is probably the most important, so I saved it till last, okay? Adaptability. You have to be adaptable and ready to, and this is a buzzword, isn't it? Ready to pivot your strategy. If market conditions or customer preferences change, how much of market conditions changed in the last two to three years since COVID? Loads. So staying on your toes is key to long-term success, being able to adapt and change um, and move forward and not hang your hat on things. And if they don't work out, move on from it. So this, this, the, all of these points that I've given you so far, they serve you as a foundation, 
yeah, to your business may vary depending on your niche, okay, your target audience and your personal business goals, but regularly reviewing and going into your planning with this strategy will really help. So how do you generate more sales from this business strategy, from all of these points that I have shared with you today? I'm going to give you loads now. So we're going to be here for a little bit longer. Don't, um, I've got loads of comments. I'll come back to your comments. I'm really focused on this live of giving you some real quality value information before you go into the year. I'm totally motivated for getting you all on rails for 2024. So let's talk about all of the different ways that this strategy can help you to generate more sales. So let's start with data. So if you have a conversion oriented website, so there is a pop up with a sign up form to book a call with you to um, to buy us to, to get your freebie to buy a special offer, optimize your product pages with clear, appealing visuals, informative descriptions and persuasive call to action buttons. So it's got to be conversion oriented. If you've got a website, how does the customer buy? Um, how do you create the desire for them to buy on that website? Have you ticked those boxes? So that's number one under data because your data will help you with that. Leverage, number two is leverage e-commerce platforms. So consider selling your products on lots of different places, Etsy, Amazon Handmade, eBay, your website, anywhere else, not on the high street, you know, even card companies like Moonpig and Funky Pigeon take designs um, for cards and license them and give you a percentage. So there's loads of opportunities there to get your products and services out there on multiple different platforms. So if you're a service provider and you do courses, go be a guest speaker in somebody else's mastermind. Think about how you leverage the thing that you do. Now, this is the gospel according to Mandy and any other successful business owner. Email, email marketing, build an email list right from the get go. If I could go back four years, I'd have started earlier and gone bigger with this. But build an email list of engaged customers and potential clients because it's like a cooking pot. They will sit there liking what you do, they'll unsubscribe if they don't like what you do. So don't worry about that. Let people go. The people that stay are the important ones. And it's like a cooking pot of people that may buy from you now, soon or in the future. And your job is to engage them and send out engaging emails that are not spammy looking to encourage repeat sales. It is the gospel. So point number four is sales promotions. So, you know, run occasional sales, discounts or limited time offers to create a sense of urgency and use throughout the year um, natural events for that, like Valentine's, like Easter, like Mother's Day, like Halloween. We've just had and it's Halloween today. Um, Black Friday, Christmas, January sale. All of those things should be in your diary as opportunities to clear stock or to discount courses or to bundle together your books. If you have more than one, I've had that conversation this week. How can you create a bundle if you've got more than one book and use that as a promotion? There are always ways, but plan them in advance. Make the most of these sales promotion opportunities to make sure you're clearing through stock. Nobody wants to be holding stock, believe me, because it's dead money. Number five on my, um, you know, get more sales list is customer reviews and testimonials. They are really important to your business. So satisfied customers, get them to leave reviews, ask them for a review, ask from, for a written review or a video review. Great if you can get a video review because video is so important. Yeah, get them on your website and share them regularly through your socials. It builds trust and credibility and that famous know, like, and trust factor. 
because if people are saying you are awesome or your products are awesome, it encourages other people to give it a go and buy. So number six on my top tips to use this strategy for sales is cross-selling and upselling. So suggest related or complementary products. I was so good at this when I was a store manager. Yeah, so good at this cross-selling um, or additional product selling. And I think anybody that was uh, with me in Summerfield days would agree to this and say I was the queen of it. You could not walk around my store without an add-on sale being in front of you. So at the bananas, I would have custard, yeah, bananas and custard. It made sense to me. Um, at the rotisserie chickens, I would have baguettes because people would often buy a fresh baguette, baguette with their freshly roasted chicken. And everywhere you went round my store, there were add-ons. So tin openers with the tins, yeah. Um, men's magazines <laughs> with the Jurex um, or with the toilet roll or things like that. You know, what? What? what's like, I know I'm a ridiculous, I am ridiculous. I did go to the, the point of, I did win an award for having the most add-on sales in the company. But cross-selling and upselling and add-on sales are really important. So if, for instance, let's take this to crafters and artists at the minute. If somebody um, buys your course, let's say you've got a course making something, perhaps you sell them a kit of the, so one of my clients, um, Rachel is fabulous and she creates these wonderful hairs that you've seen me making out of old uh, fabric, but she also now has kits. So you can buy the kit of fabric and embellishments to be able to make the pattern. So you can buy the course, which gives you the pattern and you can buy the kit to make it. That's an add on sale because not everybody um, has the right fabric lying around the house to use. Um, perhaps if you had a knitting kit, you could have the add-on of yarn or knitting accessories, things like that. So just to give you a couple of examples that are relevant. Um, and if you're an artist and you are doing art courses, for instance, maybe you could have a starter kit of art supplies that you gather for the clients that are buying into what you do um, and have a premium price for that rather than them having to drive to, um, cause remember, you know, new people, and I want to, I want to underline this new people starting out painting. I've not done it for years or I've never done it before. Won't know what to buy if they're in the range. So imagine if somebody sent you to buy equipment to, um, landscape your garden would you know exactly what to buy if you weren't a landscape gardener well if you can do that part of the work and send out a starter kit of paints brushes etc that they need then people will pay a premium for that because they don't have to drive to the nearest range or art shop and stand there looking gormless not knowing which paints to buy you can do that for them so think about those things that really add value to what it is that you are currently selling that you can upsell or add on sell to. Okay, are you sick of me yet? Those of you that are still here, and if you're still here, well done for still being here. All right, because I've still got a few points here, but this is all about prompting you to think about how you generate those additional sales in 2024. So the next point is have a referral program. Um, so create a referral program, program that rewards your customers who refer new clients. So it could be a 10% off voucher on Etsy, um, or it could be, um, an affiliate link. Whereas if people use their affiliate link, they get paid an affiliate percentage on the, your programs or custom or services. It helps, it encourages people to spread the word about what you're doing. So consider referral program or affiliates. Okay, this one, a little bit might be out of your in area of interest, but SEO and content marketing. I've mentioned that in your strategy, but it's one of those things that you need to continuously work on improving. Your website's SEO, 
so that you can rank higher in the search engines. So if you create valuable content that brings organic traffic to your site and educates your audience with key words in it, that is going to be constantly working on your content marketing and SEO. So that's like an ongoing thing all year round and you get better and better at it the more that you do it. Do it. Okay. There's a few things here that you might think I'll never do this, but honestly, you might at some point. And it's all about considering this as part of your strategy. So social media advertising, investing in social media advertising. So Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, you can target specific demographics and interests to reach your potential customers. You can do it in a controlled way with a low budget. But what I would always say is find somebody who knows what they're doing. Don't try and set ads up yourself because they are complicated um, in terms of knowing what to do to set them up. But if you have got, you know, if you, you're increasing your sales because you're doing all these things and you've got your business strategy and you've got some spare money, remember, it's about return on investment. If you put £500 into Facebook ads, you could see 10 times that in return. So therefore, is it worth paying for the Facebook ad? But you've got to have the right copy. You've got to have the, the ad set up correctly. So that investment of 500 might be 1000 when you find the right person to do the ads for you. So think about that as part of your strategy. And if you can't afford it now, put it for down the line. It's something that you'd like to do later on. What's really good for us creatives is live demonstrations and workshops. For those of you that came to my planning and goal setting workshop a couple of weeks ago, yeah, I do that so that I can demonstrate to people my knowledge and how I can help them. So host, you can host live product demonstrations. Now, there's another one of my clients, Penny Nanton, who does this really well. She does loads of demonstrations of how she creates her signature art canvas by getting people in the audience to come and participate. It's a wonderful way of showing what she can do. So you could do crafting workshops. You could do it on um, online, on Zoom or in real life. Engage your audience and showcase the value of you and your products. I'm getting thirsty now. So... Um, <laughs> We're getting to the end, thank goodness, yeah. Um, subscription boxes I mentioned, yeah. Uh, encourage subscription services related to you. And I've mentioned that with the add-on sales as well. Of if, you're, if you've got a really successful course teaching people how to paint, perhaps you tie them into a subscription model, not just an initial pack of paints with a new color every month or something like that, you know. Think about it in detail, all these little ways that you can bring new revenue and build your loyal customer base. Um, a great sales tactic is customer engagement, creating a sense of community. OK, so have a group like this. Yeah. Um, create that sense of community amongst your customers. Encourage them to share what they're doing, what their struggles are, what their wins are. Yeah, use your social media to create customer engagement in your business. Now, one thing that's really good for artists and creatives and crafters is influencer um, collaborations. So look at influencers, get yourself a list of key influencers or bloggers in the creative niche. Um, get them to review your work and introduce them, you, to their audience. Now, this isn't easy to do, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try. If you can get onto one influencer's audience, it can skyrocket your business overnight. So think about that as one of your sales strategies. Go and look at the influencers you like. Go and start engaging in their content and making comments and adding value and then kind of try and introduce your stuff in there. So in terms of when I said automate, 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 there are a few final things here. So fulfillment and 
um, postage and shipping. So make sure you've got efficient and reliable order fulfillment and shipping and that you are getting things to people at the best possible price for shipping um, in the quickest amount of time. Because once people have made the decision to buy, they want their thing as soon as possible. So automate it and make sure it's good and reliable. What you don't want is cart abandonment. So let's talk about cart recovery. Yeah, people's basket. Most people shop, they fill the basket and they don't follow through to payment. So how do you automate abandoned basket, abandoned cart recovery? Use email reminders to recover abandoned shopping carts. Offer incentives like 10% discount. Now you can automate all of this. You'd have to work with your web provider, but you would. You can automate all of this to get people to buy. The final thing, I suppose, is customer feedback and customer retention. All right. You want feedback so you can use it and you want to retain existing customers by providing exceptional, exceptional. We go back to the exceptional customer service, post purchase support, loyalty programs, exclusive content, things like that to retain those customers in your world. Because when you keep customers, they will buy from you again and again. They'll start to buy more. You build in that, that know, like, and trust, that customer loyalty that's everything in business. And it doesn't matter which business you're in. What I want when people leave the art bank is, as they've done this morning, we'll see you next year, if not before. For me, that tells me that they've had a good experience here, that I've done my job right. And it's the same with my clients moving on from the creative mastermind. How can we stay in your world? How can we continue to work with you? So it's about that. I mean, that's a lot this morning. So I'm sorry. And this is a longer live than normal. But we are coming to the, you know, we're in the end of October. We're going into November, November, December. We're in January. If you leave it too late and you don't get your thoughts down on paper and get this business strategy in for next year and really think about sales. That's why I wanted to dig deep today and really give you all those little prods to think about how you are going to think about strategy and sales. Because I want you to have the best year ever next year. Okay, that's me done. I need a drink. Um, next week, I am going to be interviewing one of my um, current clients, former clients, current clients, which has been in and out of my world now for nearly four, coming up to four years, I think. We've worked together through the Creative Mastermind. We've worked together um, one on one coaching. Um, she comes here regularly to the art bank, and that is the most amazing Rachel Beatty, who now has Neuro Boost. And um, she is building her business at the moment, and she's just launched a book. So she's coming on next week to talk to you about how we got her to the point of finding a business model that worked for her, a business strategy that worked for her, and to the point of writing a book and publishing that book, and she launches it today. So go over to Neuroboost, find Rachel Beatty, but she will be here next week live with me talking about the journey that she's been on in her new book. So I will see you then. Have an amazing week, and I'm now going to go and unpack my new ring light that's sitting in a box on there and it's been there since last Thursday so have a great day everybody I'll see you next week